iGenity is a proud sponsor of I Am Angus. For more information, visit iGenity.com. What I love most about the livestock business is uh, visiting ranches here in this area in Yolo County with my students. So I take my 270 kids uh, to commercial ranches and I see how the ranchers are totally uh, and utterly in love with what they do. And they tell them how they produce their, their beef and, uh, and what they know about the soil, what they know about the plants, what they know about the animals, what they know about the climate. They are the number one ecologists. I have never met better ecologists than beef ranchers. So when these environmentalists that have this activist agenda in, in many cases tell a rancher, well, you are the biggest polluter, I'm, I'm here to tell you there is nobody who knows more about the environment than this rancher. And when my students, who oftentimes come from Los Angeles, Sacramento, and, and San Francisco, meet these ranchers, they, for the first time, get it. They really get it, that these are stewards of the land. And that's not just some PR, but that's what they are. So I love to work with these people, and I love on ways to improve uh, their societal standing and, and the way they produce in a way that meets societal needs. So in uh, 2006, the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization, or short FAO, uh, published a paper called Livestock's Long Shadow. And this paper, Livestock's Long Shadow, said that livestock produces more greenhouse gases than transportation. The report said that livestock produces 18% of all global greenhouse gases and that livestock is one of the largest sources of greenhouse gases in the world. And when I read this article or when I read this report, I found that there were methodological problems with this report and that the comparison of livestock to transportation was flawed. So what we found was that when they looked at livestock, they looked at all the sources within a dairy or feed lot or ranch that produces these greenhouse gases like CO2 and methane and nitrous oxide. And they actually did a very good job on that. They looked at the whole life cycle, everything from soil to crops to feed to uh, animals to their waste, waste then being incorporated into the soil, uh, herbicides, pesticides, the whole life cycle of everything related to a livestock operation and how that livestock operation contributes to greenhouse gases. But when they looked at transportation, they didn't do a complete life cycle assessment, but instead they only looked at direct emissions of burning of gas. They didn't look into making cars, trucks, trains, planes, ships, getting the oil out of the ground in Saudi Arabia, shipping it to Texas, refining it, then transporting it to the gas stations, then putting it into the cars and burning it, but only the burning of the gas. So while they looked at everything for livestock, they only looked at a partial analysis for transportation. And because of that, different use of methodologies, the comparison of livestock to transportation was flawed. And actually, the United Nations FAO was very honest about it, saying, yes, Midland is right, we didn't do uh, the same analysis for transportation as we did with livestock, and so we need to go back to the drawing board. And they did. The ultimate finding that was just published by the United Nations FAO a few weeks ago is that livestock production as we do it in the United States is actually a model for the rest of the world. Why? Because we use genetics, advanced genetics in our animals and plants. We use advanced healthcare so that not parasites eat the nutrients, but our livestock. Um, we also feed them uh, optimal diets so that they grow in a short period of time. i could give you one example. Uh, the average dairy cow in California produces approximately 20,000 pounds of milk. The average cow in Mexico produces 4,000 pounds of milk a year. And so it takes five Mexican cows to produce the same amount of milk as one California cow. If you now think about this, what the environmental impact of these five animals is versus this one animal here, it is tremendously greater. And that's Mexico. In India, it takes 20 cows to produce the same amount of milk as one of our cows. And what this really means is that in developing countries of the world, the impact livestock has is very large. And in order for those growing populations in countries like India and China 
to support their societal needs, nutritional needs, they will have to follow suit to what we have done here, which is produce livestock products with as small a herd as possible. And that's what we have learned to do in this country. And that means that efficiencies are the key to environmental quality. The more efficient you are, the fewer animals you need to produce a given amount of product. In 30 years, we'll have 9.3 billion people in the world, and we have a doubling of the amount of animal protein ahead of us, meaning we need to have 100% more livestock production in the world within the next 30 years. We cannot increase the amount of arable land in the world. The amount of land suitable for crop and animal production cannot be increased. So whether we have 9 billion or 10 or 15 billion people in the world, we cannot increase the amount of land that's suitable to raise those livestock and crop products. And that means we have to become more efficient with what we have.